Welcome back to another episode of Out of Bounds on the Boom Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today we're talking about Black Lives Matter. While I have your attention, let me talk to you about one of the most annoying things that happens right now, and that is the conversation about semantics. It happens a lot of different places. It's a lot of times in the entertainment world, but we always hear, oh, you're just arguing semantics. Oh, that's a matter of semantics. And yes, it is a matter of semantics and semantics are important. Semantics is a part of our linguistic structure. And so when we talk about, um, for, for example, one of the most infamous movies out there, Batman versus Superman. A lot of people have problems with that movie. One of the big problems was the portrayal of Lex Luthor. There's a lot of people that say, I hate Jesse Eisenberg is that Lex Luthor. There's also a lot of people that say, you know what? I don't mind it because he's uh, Lex Jr. He's not actually Lex Luthor. That's his son. And they completely give the character and everything that happens a pass. I'm a junior. You talk about my dad um, as Terry Sr. and what he did. Or if you were looking for him to collect something, you say, oh, you're Terry. You owe us this. I'm say, actually, uh, I'm Terry Jr., and they can say, eh, that's a matter of semantics. Close enough. You're still Terry. No, it's not. That that little part matters a whole lot. So just because it's something little doesn't mean it doesn't matter. We can go down the line with a lot of different examples of that. So, um, I mean, when we talk about this discussion, we have to talk about this idea of semantics and this a false idea that a lot of people believe it doesn't matter or is not important when it actually is. There's a reason we use language for a lot of different things. And especially when we're talking about things like this, because people hide behind names, they hide behind organizations, and they're not always the same thing. You know, if somebody does something like if somebody does something racist at an organization that I work for, that doesn't then make me racist. And so you got to understand the difference between individuals and the bodies that they work for or represent. And so all that to say, when we're talking about Black Lives Matter, there's a large confusion about what's going on. And I knew that there was, but I didn't realize how much it was until recently. Um, obviously, I talked about topics all the time, but uh, because it's now a big thing to talk about and a lot of people want to voice their opinions since i talk about it during this time now i'm getting a lot more attention and a lot more trolls and so uh there's trolls there's ignorant people there's racist people there's innocent people there's all type of people but we get into this conversation and you see a common thread that a lot of people um you know whether they're white black or anything else they don't understand black lives matter so i'm gonna give it to you from my perspective and from the information i know um obviously there's gonna be people that try to but i I, i've looked up enough to understand the exact sentiments there's their details that i don't know obviously i don't know every single person and every single thing that has been said but i'm telling you what it how it transpired and we'll go from there so number one Black Lives Matter started out as just that, a saying. Like, right now it's so politicized and it's funny uh, watching Michael Shea um, and his stand-up with one of my friends not too long ago, which was, what, two, three years ago? Actually, might be more than that. And it was like, that was just a saying. And I'm like, back then it wasn't so politicized. You could just say Black Lives Matter and people could be like, yeah, they do or no, they don't. And that was it. But now it's just like a big thing. And so it started out as a saying. It started out as a saying like um, the way that we are being treated as either hostile or presumed to be hostile, presumed to be suspects presumed to be dangerous whatever it is whatever it is in your mind that makes it okay as a cop to kill us instead of apprehend us and whatever it is in your mind as a citizen to think that it's okay for a cop to do it we're telling you our lives matter despite whatever it is you think 
our lives matter just as much as anybody else. You don't have to kill us. You could show us the same type of restraint and respect as other people. And that's what it was. And then that evolved into a hashtag. Obviously, um, back in that time, social media wasn't what it is today. Um, social media has had an explosion in the last six years. And so uh, that was one of the early things. It was like hashtag Black Lives Matter. The hashtags, you know, really resonated with a lot of people. And it was all in the idea of the sentiment. As I said, again, this idea that our lives matter enough that cops should start treating us as equal and not as threats, not as people that they can just kill because they can't catch them, not as people that they could kill because they talk disrespectful to them, not as somebody they can kill because, oh, well, you were probably going to kill somebody else. No, treat us equally. And so that is where Black Lives Matter started. Now, from there, I knew enough to understand uh, years later that it became an organization because the hashtag doesn't live, you know, wherever. Um, it, it really doesn't because people can hashtag one thing, but until it's a formalized body, it's not going to mean anything, you know, until people put money behind it, like hashtag release the Snyder cut. It was something cool to say. But until people with real money started buying billboards and doing different things and you start creating groups that want to talk about it and do things, then then that's when it matters. Same thing with hashtag storm area 51. How did that work out? Obviously, you could say something and make it viral, but that doesn't mean anything unless you put something behind it. So when Black Lives Matter continued to be a thing and it continued to show up, I understood that obviously they it must be some different. And then later on, years later, I realized that they made an organization at some point to um, make it a place where they can make decisions and they can be organized you know as we all talk about conventional wisdom um the five fingers are stronger together than they are apart and so we think about this with unions and anything else if it's just you talking about something or you and a friend or you and a bunch of friends it's different than you actually putting an organization together that people can wear the shirts, the logos, they can have a slogan, they can meet, they can be members. Like that's different. When you organize, you pull your power together. And so eventually Black Lives Matter was made into an organization by some people. And um, that's just what it was. So when we get to the today with George Floyd, for me, I'm like, look, I've always said I don't support Black Lives Matter as an organization. There's a, there's really not many organizations I support on a political level. Um, there's definitely people I patronize, but I don't support anybody, you know, formally. And so I say I don't support Black Lives Matter as an organization, but I support the sentiment of Black Lives Matter movement. And I've always said that. And until this George Floyd thing happened, you start to realize how significant it is to be distinguishing those two because people just don't understand. Because as a movement, we're looking at the definition. It's a group of people working together to advance their shared political, social or artistic ideas. And so it was essentially a movement. And that's essentially what you get online. It's a hashtag. Black Lives Matter. We are talking about police brutality. We're talking about police reform. We're talking about um, racism and power built into our police system and how they interact with the people they're supposed to serve. And that is what the conversation was. So if you were writing a blog or you're doing a YouTube channel or you're writing an article or you're teaching a class or you're writing a book or anything, you can say hashtag Black Lives Matter or Black Lives Matter. And the sentiment of that movement is shared. They know what you're talking about. But then Black Lives Matter became an organization. And that's when I backed away because I know 
once things become an organization, that's when things get political because a it gets political because people, again, they don't believe that you have power as individuals. But once you start organizing, now they know that you have more power than you had before. And so they're going to attack it. And so that that's what happened with this. This organization happens and it's made up of individuals. So somebody could say, well, this one person part of Black Lives Matter is an owner or he contributes money or whatever. He thinks this. So Black Lives Matter is a political agenda to do this. And sometimes they're official agendas. Sometimes there's just individuals who say things. And since they're part of the organization, quote unquote, they're, you know, well, now Black Lives Matter believes this because they said this and you represent something that's bigger than you before is just individuals and people aren't scared of individuals because as an individual, we don't make up decisions. But as a body, you can make decisions collectively and use that power collectively. And so the easiest way to attack a body is to attack the individual parts that make up that body. So again, Black Lives Matter forms and you can say we want better police uh, training. And it's like, that's all we care about. But then they'll point out the one person and be like, Terry, who's a part of Black Lives Matter, also believes that abortion should be illegal. So Black Lives Matter is also, you know, against abortion or whatever. And so then they try to pick it apart and make it politicized so they can tear down the entire organization. And that's essentially what happened. So also another thing you can do which is is legal in this in the country is you use legal terms and litigation to attack your opponent so there's something called the black lives matter global network foundation incorporated that's a corporation they were started by presumably a number of the uh people who were activists in the original black lives matter movement and they ended up linking up financially with some uh, non-for-profit organizations. They came up with their own mission statements, blah, blah, blah. This is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, Incorporated. Then there was another organization founded called the Black Lives Matter Foundation. And they were founded as a non-for-profit federal income tax exemption uh, corporation and basically um, they came out with their own ideals their own thoughts and how they wanted to approach things their own demands and from there they take donations and whatnot because when people hear black lives matter they just hear one black lives matter they don't realize it's two different companies plus a whole movement which is not a formal company and so that happens now both organizations claim they don't they don't uh have any affiliation with each other and they both claim each other stole their stuff blah 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 now did somebody who agrees with the sentiment of black lives matter start that but he wants to go about it a different way did somebody that hates black lives matter start that as a way to take away attention and money from black lives matter or is it just like legit we thought about this at the same time but we got two different ideas we don't know we don't know the truth to that but the fact is this is what happened when we're talking about semantics people are always talking about well this is this and well it's just a matter of semantics no a matter of semantics is important because who started this organization what their agenda is what they're asking for can be vastly different now to to today there's believed to be okay one group is about the original mission which is police brutality police reform especially as it relates to race there's other people that say the ugna organization is more about black lives in general black equality fighting racism that's a much bigger scope that's a much different uh, category than the other one 
And then you got the Black Lives Movement, which is just not an organization. It's just people. So when people say Black Lives Matter, and this is the easiest way to get people caught up into stuff. They say Black Lives Matter protesters are violent. Now, are you talking about people that are part of one corporation, A, or the corporation B? Or are you talking about the peaceful protesters who believe in the movement? Or are you talking about people who aren't part of anything but just say the phrase Black Lives Matter? It can get very complicated. And it's easy when people don't care about the differences. They can lump them into one thing and say, Black Lives Matter did this. They're racist. Black Lives Matter did this. They're violent. Black Lives Matter did this. They're founded by Marxists. And so I hear that all the time. All oh, these Marxists, they, these Black Lives Matter is just propaganda to get the Marxists and blah, blah. Now, as I said, could it be somebody that wants to push the agenda of Marxism and they started Black Lives Matter uh, foundation? That could be true. But either way, it doesn't encompass what everybody's talking about. And so is there some parts where people are using the whole name as leverage to push the power? So if I say we're the Black Lives Matter Foundation and we believe in Marxism, but people don't know that there's different parts of Black Lives Matter then they're going to think we're speaking for Black Lives Matter. And so when people do this whole thing about we didn't ask for that, we didn't ask for Aunt Jemima, we didn't ask for uh, Uncle Ben, we didn't ask for the blackface episodes. I'm like, who is we? Because we as black people don't have leaders that speak for everybody. We don't have elected officials. We don't have people that go out and talk for us. And so then people start, well, the Black Lives Matter movement. Which movement are you talking about? I mean, there's the movement, but are you also talking about the organization? Because they lump them all together. And so there are lies with the Black Lives Matter. There are people that are part of certain organizations with Black Lives Matter name. And they claim that they're doing things on behalf of Black Lives Matter. And it's not true. There's people that believe they or I'm sorry, there's people that believe in the sentiment, the idea behind the original Black Lives Matter. And they choose to do things. And then the media or racist or ignorant people say, look, look, this Black Lives Matter person did this. This is what Black Lives Matter is. And that's not true either. So to sit here and say, oh, you're out arguing about semantics. You're just trying to complicate it. Life is complicated. It's not black and white. It's gray. And so when you're talking about legal terms, it is very complicated. So yes, there are company, there's an organization that is Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation Incorporated, or better yet known as the Black Lives Matter Network. There's the Black Lives Matter Foundation. And then there's the movement, which is not centralized, which is not organized. It's just people who believe in the original message. And so there's easy ways for people who believe in original Ferguson and everything, but don't follow things. They could get confused. Oh, I saw Black Lives Matter, you know, the logo they created. And I'm thinking that that's the original or that's the official Black Lives Matter. And it's not. There's white people that say, well, I don't know what's going on. And then they see the Black Lives Matter people doing this and they say, oh, my God, that's what Black Lives Matter is all about. And that's not true either. So it's very complicated. It's very muddy. But at the end of the day, understand what it was all brought about was this idea to fight police brutality and promote racial inequality with how our public servants People who have sworn an oath, people who had elected to be in these positions, how they police our citizens. You're held to a higher standard. People keep arguing to me about what black on black crime and other. Look, we tell me any space where we control what regular citizens do. That's an ongoing fight. 
but a fight to control what our sworn officials and our public servants are doing that should not be a question that should be very easy to fight because they should do the right thing it bringing up black on black crime when we're talking about black lives matter is just like bringing up a teacher smoking in their uh, uh classroom and the teacher saying well y'all don't say nothing to the homeless guy across the street smoking very different positions very different responsibilities that you signed up for and so that's number one and then number two understanding that not everything you see attached to blm and black lives matter is not an organization it's not marxist and sometimes it's just an individual in their opinion and it's about the idea behind black lives matter so if you're going to fight black lives matter fight the idea that there should be equality in how we're treated by public servants as police that's the only thing you need to worry about all the other political rhetoric it doesn't matter that's what we're originally talking about that's what motivates most of the people who use that moniker in that phrase so i'll leave it at that go to the comment section let me know what you think share it around get the conversation started thumbs up subscribe and thank you for going out of bounds